work. All right, everyone, welcome to today's podcast. We're talking about making weight loss a game because usually when people approach weight loss, it's the opposite of that. It's this miserable thing they have to do. But so much of weight loss, so much of life is all about the mindset, all about how you're approaching things. And so there is no reason in the world that you can't change the way that you think about weight loss. And I think if you start to think of it as a game and you bring that kind of energy to it, it changes everything because all of a sudden... Uh, it's not just about the fastest results possible. It's not about how we don't think we can do it. We start to approach it completely differently. And the key difference is that we almost approach it with this challenge response. We get curious, we get interested. We start to figure out how we can get the results we want as opposed to weight loss where we tend to just say, okay, I know what I need to do and I got to force myself to do this miserable thing. Uh, to be kind of cliche, a lot of times with dieting, we really think inside the box. We do what we've been told to do even though it hasn't worked for us a million times. And we don't really think creatively. We don't look for better ways to accomplish the goals we want to achieve. And so when you start to think of it as a game, you start to look for better ways to improve yourself, to find little shortcuts to figure out what you want to do, and to kind of see the bigger picture. Uh, because again, the end goal here is not just to lose weight. It is to master the game, to master the game of weight. Because what that comes down to is really three categories. I refer to this as the weight mastery pyramid. It's getting your mindset right, your lifestyle right, and your eating right. And so just like any other game that you may approach, um, again, I'm a big basketball player. So with basketball, you break it down. I mean, there's dribbling, there's shooting, and there's defense, you know, are three of the big ones. And so you keep focusing on these three different areas and you get better and better at them. You do different drills to get better at these areas and they make you better overall. And so with weight loss, we rarely do this. We just say, okay, I'm just going to force myself to follow a plan. We don't think about getting better at the different components of weight mastery. We don't think about how we can make this work for us. We don't see ourselves and anticipate that as we keep practicing, we're going to get better. <laughs> a lot of times with weight loss, we just think it was a straight line. I'm always going to be the same person. I'm always going to fight against myself. I'm always going to be forcing myself. It's always going to be miserable. And that's not true if you approach it in this other way because you keep getting better. You keep getting better and better and better and better and better. And the better you get at things, the easier it becomes. So I strongly suggest that you start to enjoy the process of weight mastery. You start to look forward to how you can get better at it, how you can make it easier. You anticipate and expect that as you do this longer and longer, you get more and more masterful at it. And this to me, when you think of it this way, is a game changer because all of a sudden it becomes a challenge. And it becomes a challenge that's so worthwhile, though, because it impacts positively so many areas of your life. So stop dreading it and start looking at it as a game and enjoy the process because you can get way better at it and it can completely transform right in front of your eyes when you approach it as a game. So I hope this helps you out. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them and we'll get to them. Yeah. Let's see here. That's not one question. Uh, Courtney, Mama too. what are your thoughts on fasting? Uh, it depends what kind of fasting you're talking about. I, uh, I'm okay with intermittent fasting, I guess. Uh, I don't mind intermittent fasting. I don't like intermittent fasting in the context of dieting. So if that makes sense, uh, I actually intermittent fast to some degree. Now, again, I guess it depends on who you talk to because some people feel that uh, intermittent fasting is specifically the 16 hours off. And if you're doing less than that, it's, it's not as count. So I don't know, but I do a thing I, I refer to as nighttime fasting and I'll stop eating six, seven o'clock at night and I'll start eating the next day, seven, eight. That's pretty normal for me. And I like that a lot. That really works for me. Hey, thanks for the roses. Um, yeah, if you're talking about long-term fasts, uh, if you're doing them for reasons other than weight loss, knock yourself out, okay? I would never, you know, who gives a shit what I think about if you're doing, you know, long-term fasting for spiritual reasons, um, or something of that nature, that's a whole different story. That's probably not what you mean. If you're talking about long-term fast for weight loss, I don't really see a lot of proof that they're effective. I find for most people, and certainly this was my experience, I've, I've done long-term fasting. I hated it. 
Um, I dreaded it as it was approaching. I was miserable while I was doing it. And then afterwards, I was obsessed with food and really hungry for a long time. So uh, long-term fasting is something I've avoided for many, many years. So again, it all comes back to what I consider to be the core um, rule of, of weight mastery is that there's no right or wrong. There's only what works for you. So I would bounce things off of what works for you. But if you try doing different forms of fasting and it's really stressful and you don't like it, you don't have to do that. There's, there's just so many ways to lose weight. It all comes down to just reducing calories. And there's so many ways to do that that will resonate so much better with you probably. You know, um, Again, this is if you don't like fasting. Uh, but if you start focusing and aiming towards the things that work for you, I think you're going to set yourself up for much better results. Um, because again, in closing, I think people that do long-term fast to lose weight are just setting themselves up for disappointment. And I get that on here every day. Um, someone will ask me what, what I think about water fasting or long-term fasting for weight loss. And I think it's stupid because what, what's the point of doing something temporary to lose weight? Because right on the other side of that fasting is gaining the weight all back. And that's so devastating. You know, even if you know, you know, it's just devastating. And so I prefer to invest my time and energy into strategies that are built for the long term. And that's something I exclusively, I do nothing short term. I really don't. Unless it's some little challenge or something I don't really give a shit about. But everything I do to really master my weight is always built on, can I do this long term? Do I want to do this long term? So I'm always taking into account, not just if I'm losing weight quickly, but is this sustainable? Is this comfortable for me? And that philosophy has served me so well, and it will serve you well too, because I've, I've done this for 20 years. I've done over 6,000 private weight loss sessions. Um, we can't just measure weight loss plans based on how quickly we lose weight in the short term. Um, that sort of thinking is what keeps you trapped. And so we got to think longer term. So those are my thoughts on fasting. Um, Erica says, I've actually been, what would you say? I've actually been having fun this time, treating it like a game. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> right, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. When it comes to weight loss, we're so... We're so uh, just, boy, talk about like inside the box thinking, you know, I mean, people, because I work with, my clients are always very intelligent, you know, overthinkers, perfectionists to some level, usually successful professionally or personally, and then they struggle with their weight. And what I see consistently over and over again is smart, intelligent people just checking their intelligence at the door as they step into the dieting room and just, well, just tell me what to do. <laughs> just tell me what to do. I'll do it. I'll do it. I got to stop eating carbs. Okay. I'm just going to stop eating carbs. I got to stop eating for 16 hours. Okay. You know, and then they can't do it because it's miserable for them. And, uh, and then they don't stick with it, you know, but the worst part is <laughs> then four months later go by, they go, Oh, I got to lose weight. What do I got? Keto? Keto is the popular diet. Okay. I'll do keto again. You just, you just fucking tried it. You just tried it. It didn't work. What do you think's different this time? You know, and, and that's, I don't know. What can I say? You know, I get on here every day to try and remind you guys of this. But uh, yeah, if he, Eric has been, you know, doing a different approach, it makes a lot more sense. Um, you can turn this into a game. You can have fun with it. You can approach this completely different. And that's what I think is the most important piece of the puzzle. Because I think that most people approach, I always think this, you know, again, my weight mastery pyramid I refer to a lot is mindset, lifestyle, eating. And I think most people, when they try and lose weight, don't focus on those bottom two levels at all, even though they're most important ones. And so you wonder why you keep, you try and change your eating for a little while and it never sticks. Well, do you ever really have a strategic approach to change your, your lifestyle? And have you ever, ever even tried to influence your mindset? And the answer is probably no. And so if you're wondering why you haven't gotten the results you want, it's not because you don't have willpower. It's not because you're a sweets addict. It's not because you're an overeater. It's most likely because you have never been shown how to influence your mindset, how to strategically influence your lifestyle, and how to strategically influence your eating in a way that works for you and gives you the results you want. And when you start to look at it that way, it starts to become a game because, I mean, that's one of the things people love my, about my program so much. And there's a, lot, there's a lot of mindset and hypnosis and all this other stuff as well. But one of the core parts of the program is the weight mastery blueprints, where we break down the mindset, lifestyle, and eating pieces into little categories. And you fill in these fill in the blank blueprints so that you have your own customized mindset blueprint, lifestyle blueprint, eating blueprint that resonates with you to give you the results you want. You know, And when you start breaking it down into, into smaller pieces, it makes it easier to diagnose where the problem is and to fix it. And you as a dieter don't have that ability. It's all or nothing. Right? You're either 100% doing everything perfect or you're not doing anything at all. And that's a, it's a horse shit way to go about anything and, and certainly weight loss and dieting. So um, 
people that are always struggling, you know, it's almost always originating in the mindset part. Um, user 931, I uh, hope you're well. I am well. Can I rewatch what I missed from live TikToks on YouTube? Yeah, absolutely, everyone, right? So um, if you don't know, I do these usually at noon. I, I got a call today at 12, so I'm doing this one early. Um, but I'm pretty much here Monday through Friday, uh, noon Eastern. And, uh, you know, listen, for me, if you don't know, my mission in life is to help as many people as possible live at their goal weight. For me, this is a mission because weight is life and death. My father died at 54 of a heart attack. I was nine years old. Most traumatic experience of my life. And as much as I swore I wasn't going down that path, 10 years later, I was almost 50 pounds overweight. I was, I was more than 50 pounds heavier than I am now. And so I just was very fortunate in my life to come across the things that really just transformed everything for me. Because I've been, the 50 pound weight loss, that, that's great. But the more impressive part, in my opinion, is maintaining it for 30 years. And that's what I'm all about, is weight mastery. So again, I'm here every every Monday through Friday, uh, 12 noon Eastern. But if you miss them, you can go to YouTube because I live stream them. So I'm on TikTok, usually Instagram, although Instagram's not working today for some reason. Um, TikTok Live, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm on all, all four of those um, at the same time. And then YouTube's the only one that has like the replays of it. And then I take the audio and put it on as a podcast. So if you want to listen to just the audio podcast, listen to it. But this I can tell you, folks. Yes, I have, I have a program that I work. I, I coach people and work with them. Um, but I also do this for free. And, and this alone will help you as well. You know, obviously coach me, you get you know, faster, you know, more, you know, in-depth results. But um, I get people all the time just listening to this, you know, getting amazing results. Uh, Paisley says, give me your typical day of eating and exercising. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Now, I don't usually like to do this because what I eat, who gives a shit? Because I'm me, you're you. So I'm a big fan of, uh, I, I don't really like to tell people what I eat because I know most dieters, just tell me what you do and then I'll do it. But if it's not built for you, it's probably not going to work. So I prefer to kind of give people structures and bring them through it, but whatever. So the first thing is that how I structure my eating and that's the one thing I know I just said that there's no right or wrong with weight loss. There's only what works for you. My one exception is I believe you've got to structure your eating. Um, so the way I structure my eating is I have five clean days, two pleasure days a week. And usually it's Monday through Friday are the clean days, Monday through Friday afternoon are the clean days, um, the weekends, the pleasure days. And so on the clean days, I eat the same breakfast every day, 99% of the time. I eat the same lunch every day. Um, dinners are different, but similar week to week. Now, by doing it this way, I make it easy to eat this way, okay? Because I always know what I need to prepare for the foods I'm going to eat. I know what I'm going to eat. There's no disappointment or worry about what I'm going to eat. I just know it. And so a lot of times for breakfast, I'll have Ezekiel toast with natural peanut butter, an apple with some peanut butter. That'll hold me over till lunch. Lunch, I have a giant salad. If you really want to see what I have for the salad, you can go to my bio and there's a pinned video where I show you how I make my, my salads. Um, and you can see those. So it's been a huge salad. I'll have that for lunch. And then dinners are typically Monday through Thursday night. Um, usually, you know, grain, vegetable, some sort of protein. Um, always very natural. I don't really eat much processed food. Uh, it's almost always pretty natural ingredients. Uh, and I'm a pescatarian, but I'm, I'm pretty much vegetarian. I, I have very, very little fish even. Um, so again, it's usually some some grain, quinoa, brown rice, something like that. Um, vegetables, uh, and then some protein, which in a lot of times in the form of beans, tofu, um, sometimes fish. So that, that's kind of what I eat. Uh, exercising, I don't really exercise. I haven't exercised consistently in 30 years. So I'm a big believer that if you really want to master your weight, you've got to master what you're eating. Okay. I'm not downplaying exercise. I think exercising fine, but I think for weight loss, I don't think exercising is, is very helpful for most people. So I'm just saying that. I think you're better off dedicating that energy you would put into exercising into mastering your eating. Because I can, I know now, think about this. I am starting to exercise for different motivations than weight. But I know now that I have a strategy, a complete strategy to master my weight that involves no exercising. You know how good that makes me feel as I imagine getting older? And sometimes you get injuries and you get sore and you get older and you can't work out the same way. I don't give a shit because I've such mastered my eating in such a way that I don't worry about that. So I think there's a lot of benefits to mastering the eating and focus on the eating over the exercising. All right. Um, that's just my opinion. But um, yeah, so that's a typical day. I do do a lot of yoga, though. I do. 
I do yoga consistently. I shouldn't say I do a lot of yoga. I used to do a lot of yoga. It's kind of gotten less. Now it's a little bit more this year and I'm still working on making that more and more and more. I feel a phase. I have, I have two kids. One one is about to go to college and the other one's getting older. And I feel life transforming again where I'm having a little bit more time and energy. And what I will quickly put into that space is more yoga. So I love yoga. I'm a certified yoga instructor. Um, but that is definitely something that I've pulled back on really over the last 20 years, I would say. Um, I've been doing yoga for 30 years. In the first 10 years, I was very intense with it because I had the time, energy, and you know space to do it. Uh, And then just life gets crazy for a little while. I maintained, but now I'm looking forward to really going deep into it again. So I I do look forward to that. So anyways, um, nippy zippy. I'm frustrated. I'm stuck on a plateau, but I'm progressing in the gym. So happy. But yeah, I'm frustrated. I get that nippy zippy. The frustration and dealing with frustration is such a huge part of this process, folks. Okay. This is what I mean about the mindset piece. So let me just be specific because I know you hear a lot of talk about mindset sometimes and it makes me crazy because what a lot of people are using the, they're saying they're saying um, mindset, but they're really just using it as a synonym for um, willpower, right? So like, come on, you gotta have the right mindset, you gotta have the right mindset. And it drives me crazy because if you knew how to have the right mindset, you would have already done it, you know? So again, one of the things I do in my program that I think is kind of unique is we break down mindset into six categories, motivation, your self-image, your habits, emotions, thinking like a thin and healthy person, and then maintenance. And so when it comes to like plateaus and dealing with the frustrations, this is the emotion piece. You need to have some strategies that you can rely on to be able to manage and deal with your emotions, right? Because you're going to go through lots of emotions. I think that's the biggest thing. I, I think your emotional eating to some degree and not being able to handle your emotions is probably the number one thing for most people, why they struggle to, to lose the weight and live at their goal weight. Because in this society, we've been conditioned to use food as the main emotional management strategy that we have. And so I think learning how to genuinely deal with emotions, feel the emotions you want to feel, and deal with the shitty emotions you don't want to feel without food is one of the most important things you've got to learn. And so that's why it's a whole you know section of the program. But what I will tell you about plateaus is that being stuck on a plateau, right, let's talk about that. Because I think, again, this comes from the framing of a dieter, right? Because a dieter is always just really obsessed with weight loss. And as soon as they hit a plateau or the scale gets stuck, it starts getting very frustrating and and it starts teetering on discouraging and quitting. Because for a dieter, the only thing that matters is the weight going down. And so when you start hitting a couple of weeks um, where where the weight's not moving, it's, it's devastating for most people most dieters. So I like to reframe plateaus right off the bat. And instead of looking at it as a plateau, I like to look at it like, you know, listen, first off, the ultimate goal is to be at a plateau, right? Your goal is not to lose weight. Your goal is to live at your goal weight forever. So at the end of the day, you're looking to get to a forever level plateau. I've been at the same weight for 30 years. I had one blip 12 years ago, but I'm always at the same weight. Now, the reason I say that is because most dieters trade the pleasure of the food for the pleasure and the excitement of the scale going down. And as soon as the scale stops going down, all of a sudden, where's the pleasure and the excitement coming from? I mean, it's estimated 95% of people put the weight back on after they lose it. This shit drives me crazy, by the way, because I just reading about this. It's always so negative, you know, that people that lose weight... And what I mean by negative is the people that lose weight and then put it back on, they're always like, well, it's their brain signaling. Their brain's telling them they're always hungry. Well, how the fuck they lose the weight in the first place? What changes from when you lose the weight to when all of a sudden you can't maintain more? Well, your brain just, when did it change? How did you deal with it to lose the weight? How'd you deal with your brain always telling you were hungry? You know, it makes me nuts because it's super duper smart ass people, smarter than me, PhDs, you know, all this shit. But it, to me, it's kind of missing some obvious stuff. And I think the obvious stuff is stuff that, This is why I think I'm unique because I'm not a scientist. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. But I spent the last 20 years working with people's mindsets. And what I notice is that the excitement all of a sudden goes away from losing weight. And now people are like, what do I do now? And most people have no idea how to live like a thin and healthy person. And they're not even, that's not even their goal. They just want to lose the weight. So I think they're setting themselves up for failure right from the beginning which is why you're always hearing me say, I don't give a shit about your weight loss. I don't give a shit how much we lost last month. I care about how long you're going to keep it off. I only learn from people that have kept the weight off for at least two years. That's why what I'm saying is fundamentally different than what you typically hear about weight loss because the whole weight loss industry, all of it, is all about how fast can you lose the weight. Okay? 
So when we think about a plateau, what I like to think of a plateau is that it's an opportunity for you to practice maintenance, okay? Because that's where you're going to be ultimately. The ultimate goal is to maintain your weight. And when you get to that place, what are you going to focus on that's going to keep you motivated and excited because the scale is going to stay the same? So what I suggest is when you hit a plateau, you use it as an opportunity to maintain and you stabilize what you're doing. So whatever you did to lose the weight, you keep doing it, but you start optimizing it by making it easier and more enjoyable, not by cutting more calories. You do the same thing, but you optimize what you're doing. You get better at maybe batch meal planning or getting the, the ingredients you need there or optimizing the, the recipe so you enjoy it more, okay? And then you stabilize what you've been doing for a couple of weeks. Now, three weeks go by and all of a sudden your body kicks in again and you start losing weight. Cool, because now you start losing weight again, but now what you've been doing to lose the weight, you're better at it. Or three weeks go by and you don't lost any weight. You say, okay, now I think I need to reduce some more calories. But now you can look at what you do much more strategically because you've stabilized things and you're doing things consistently. Now you can say, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll cut down, um, you know, I'll eat a little less at lunch or whatever. But you can make a strategic decision based on the question, where would be the easiest place for me to cut some calories out? Can you imagine? <laughs> imagine being strategic with your weight loss because you ain't. <laughs> you ain't strategic. You're tactical. The diets have taught you to be tactical with your weight loss, right? Every diet's one thing. Just stop eating carbs. Just count your points. Just stop eating for 16 hours. Just eat Mediterranean food. Just eat carnivore. Just eat meat, you know, whatever. It's always one thing. They never show how to get yourself to do it. And you're wondering why you can't get the results you want, you know? So I get it. I know you're frustrated and that's okay. Um, but I would recognize that frustration and I would ask the question, how do I want to feel about my plateau? And the way I'd think about the plateau is I'd say, I want to feel fine with it. This is a normal, natural part of getting to my goal weight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this time to really optimize what I'm doing. And uh, I think that's a, and Nibby Zippy's already been successful. So Nibby Zippy's lost a lot of weight already. So again, you have to understand this, you have to manage your emotion forever. You've got to manage your mindset forever. That's another thing with dieters. They live in this fantasy land where you think once you get to your goal weight, like, oh, I'm good. I got to my goal weight. I don't know why you think that, <laughs> but uh, you, you, you may find if you explore that, that you kind of just like not ever thinking about what happens once you get to your goal weight. Now, I will tell you what happens is you still got to manage everything. I, I always, I like the metaphor of like, like mastering your weight is like surfing. And in the sense that, that if you're surfing, the wave's always changing. You know what I mean? So you always have to be adjusting to the situation, right? The wave's always cresting and it's always different. You can't just get, it's not a static thing. Neither is your weight, neither is life, you know? So you always have to manage things. So Nibby Zippy, again, has lost a lot of weight and now there's this frustration. So again, there's always, I, I've been at the same weight. I'm, I'm always managing things. There's always things to kind of focus on. And, and it's like brushing your teeth. You're never going to stop brushing your teeth, right? They just, you imagine yourself doing it forever. That's kind of, that's how you have to internalize your weight mastery is you have to internalize it as something you're gonna do forever. And I know it freaks you out because, but that's because you think you're gonna have to diet forever. See that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When you approach this as a game, when you approach this as weight mastery, I'm, I'm focusing on it all the time, but it's relatively easy for me. Just like brushing my teeth is just automatic now. So again, you got, that, again, as a dieter, you're, oh, you're just so fucked up in the head. No offense, you know, but you've been conditioned to think like a dieter. We all have your whole life, right? Just millions of diet ads and tries and, and that's how you think about weight loss. And um, it's got y'all backwards, but you can keep with it nippy zippy, right? Learn from it, all right? Um, let's see here. Uh, John did an elimination test. That's great, John. Yeah, John, I love, John's in the program. And so John is so fun because again, very smart person, very action oriented. That's what I'm trying to say. Like all my clients are almost always very smart and very action oriented, but they're to they live in this tortured reality where they constantly are asking, what the fuck? Why can't I lose the weight? What the fuck? I'm successful over here. I'm motivated. I'm smart. I'm focused. I do all this over here. But then when it comes to the weight, I can't, I don't know what to do. And, and that this happens so often because you guys are the most likely to just go all in on diets and the diets bullshit <laughs> like they just are so john is like this but he's been in the program and it's so exciting to see him now now to me is like the most fun time for you john because now when you, you're really starting the program almost in a way because now you get to get to levels you've never gotten to before john was kind of famous for like start the year you know really intense for two months doing keto and intermittent fasting and working out you know dropping 20 pounds you know real quick but then 
not be able to maintain and go right back to what he always did, right? Just repeating that cycle year after year. And so now it's kind of fun. He's lost a decent amount of weight, but he's done it in a way that's sustainable. And so now he's still get his head about him, you know? And so when he hits a plateau or hits a rough spot, he's able to kind of manage it much more strategically. And what's going to happen from doing it that way is you're going to come up with new data, new information, new strategies, and that allows you to enter new territory. And that's what we're looking for. So I can't wait to hear about that test though, John. Paisley says, so you don't snack? What are your weekends like? Um, I I used to snack, so I want to be clear about that. I Again, it's different for each person. So I have people in my program that, that optimize around five meals a day. So again, everything I say, I just say is best practices. And, and I tell you sometimes what works for me. But it's always, it's important that you build around yourself. So I will say that for a long time, I would snack. Now, again, I optimize my snacks. The first thing I got rid of was my night after eating after dinner. That was the first habit I really spent a lot of time focusing on getting rid of. And then I started optimizing for breakfast, lunch, dinner, but I would still get hungry sometimes in between and I would snack and I would make the snacks better. But as I continued year after year, I keep optimizing my breakfast, lunch, dinner, and you just stumble into solutions. And the biggest solution I've had in the last 10 years was my salads for lunch. And that was, I read a book by Dr. Greger um, called How Not to Die. And I had already been a vegetarian, but it really just opened my eyes to the importance of nutrient density and variety. And I started adding these giant salads into my lunch. And ironically, I add these big salads, which have less calories than the breakfast or the lunch I used to eat, but I'm way more satisfied. It was an absolute game changer. So now I am, I, I almost never snack anymore, honestly. Um, if I do snack, again, I have healthy, I'll, I'll usually have fruit. I usually have banana and apple, but it's always optimized. You know, if you looked at me 20 years ago, it was a similar structure, but it was different. And there was a lot, it wasn't as clean as it is now. It just keeps getting better because folks, this is what I'm trying to tell you. You as a dieter, you don't think you're learning shit, right? I know what I got to do. I just got to get myself to do it. I already know. I already know. That's fucking, that's so not true. You know, it makes me crazy. You have to approach, like I'm so lucky because when I started my whole weight journey, my whole transformation journey in life, a big part of it was I was also at the same time exposed to guitar, yoga, martial arts, meditation. And these are all mastery paths, meaning you never get to a finish line with them. You just keep getting better and better and growing and evolving and learning more. And all, there's always more place to go. And so that was so wonderful because that's what taught me to approach weight like this, you know, always optimizing, always growing, always improving, always making it better. And that feels really good. Um, and my weekends, my weekends, I have a different strategy, but on the weekends, I'll eat more like I'll eat more flour you know what I mean? So I'll eat more carbs, um, refined carbs. I'll eat more bread, pasta. Um, but I'm still strategic even with that now. But but again, th that whole pleasure eating thing is so important. I, I don't want to get into it right now, but um, it's really, really important as well. So the weekends, yeah. But, but again, having the weekends where I eat what I want to eat is really important to the whole process. Because if I cut those weekends down, I say, oh, you know what? From now on, I'm be seven days clean. I'm always, always eating clean. That'd be the fastest way to get myself off track with my eating. And I think you all do that to yourselves. I think you set up this idea that you're going to have, you're going to be eating perfectly forever. And it's so, you want to talk about feeling deprived, right? Do that. So yeah, being strategic is, is probably the most important thing. So by the way, folks, if you're not in my world, okay, I told you my mission is to help as many people as possible with their goal weight. I think you won't find anyone that gives more away for free than me. And um, one of those things, if you go to my bio and click the link, I give you a hypnosis session. It's called The New Thin Me. It's a kickstart session. Um, that's free. Uh, it, once you opt in, I give you a, a video I made for you called Three Steps to Master Your Weight. And I kind of take through the whole system I'm, I'm kind of referring to. Um, that's completely free. I email you every day all this positive, encouraging, supportive things. I, it used to be a program I charged for. I just give it to you now um, just to kind of keep you somewhat on track. Um, you should follow me on TikTok. I'm putting videos up all the time. Seeing this stuff regularly is helpful. Uh, so, and, and then I got the Spark program I'm giving away for free, you know, so you'll get access to that. I was literally, I'm just working on it. Just a couple little things left. Um, so yeah, I'm here to help you out. So uh, yeah, if, if you haven't done that, go check it out. Um, so true about plateaus being the forever goal. Yeah, right? Isn't that a cool reframe? It's nice thinking that way though, because then you'll freak out when you hit a plateau because you have got to. I'm telling, and, and I don't give a shit, even if you're prepared for this, it's still a challenge, but you've got to get good at a lot of times with the weight loss piece, the big motivation is the weight loss, stepping on the scale, seeing it go down. And it's very exciting. Um, but again, the ultimate goal is to be at your weight. What, what excites you then? I don't stand on the scale and get excited. It's been the same number for 30 years. So how am I staying motivated to, kill, to eat the way I'm eating? 
That's the big question you all should be asking. And no one asked this question. It makes me insane. Again, I just, I just fucking read it today. Smart people that I, I think the world of talking about how obese people, after they lose the weight, they're always hungry. And, and there's brain responses that are different. I don't disagree with this, but I go back to the idea that, well, what happened when they lost the weight? You know, I just find so much weight related information is so biased and negative. It drives me crazy. But anyways, you know, what, what's going to motivate you once you get to your goal weight and the scale stops moving? Where do you get your excitement from then? That's a very important question to think about. And I can tell you, I'll give you kind of a hint to it. Uh, I think you got to take your weight loss and wrap it in personal development. I think you need to make this process way more than just about losing weight. L- weight loss in and of itself is not very motivating to a human brain and body. Hate to tell you. You've, we've evolved over millions of years in a food scarce environment so that all of our brain, all of our biochemistry, all of our biology wants us to eat as much as possible when we can because our body and brain still primitively think we're in a food scarce environment. So if you think that just wanting to lose weight is going to motivate you to lose weight, then I mean, first of all, then why hasn't it worked so far? I mean, shit, you think about weight loss 24 hours a day. You couldn't want it more than anything else. And it's not happening. It's because you're not truly motivated. But I would suggest that instead of making this about weight loss, you make this about becoming the best version of you possible. One aspect of that's you weighing what you want to weigh, but then there's so many other benefits. Your relationships improve. Your ability to make the money you want to make improves. Your ability to live the life you want to live improves. And this is way more motivating than just watching a number on a scale go down. How could you not believe me at this point? I take it to another level. You know, and it, I, this is one of the best TikTok videos I ever made was yesterday. Didn't get a lot of views. I was surprised because it got a ton of comments for how many views it got. And I asked the question. I said, basically, I don't think you really want to lose weight. Why do I say this? Because I've done almost 6,000 private weight loss sessions and I have not once seen a person who gets congruent with their goals and gets truly genuinely motivated and starts making changes who has not lost weight. So if you're not losing weight, I don't think it's that you can't lose weight. I think it's that you don't want to lose weight. I think you wish you'd lose weight, but I don't think you really want to. I think you want to keep eating the food you're eating and living the way you're living. And I think you wish you'd lose weight and the want's more powerful than the wish. And on top of that, this is a video I was referring to. Go check it out. It's very interesting. I'll make a bunch of videos based on this. Is even deeper down, I bet you literally don't want to lose weight. Like you literally don't want to become thin and healthy. You're worried about attention from men. You're worried it's going to be really hard in a life of deprivation. You're worried your skin's going to be sagging. You're worried your face is going to look older. Just saying, you know, but it gets to the core point that you weigh exactly what you want to weigh subconsciously. And we know this. And if you don't believe me, let me know in the bottom. I'll I'll prove it to you. Um, Eric said, I just wrote out plateau without getting hyper restrictive and weight is going down again naturally. Okay, there we go. Biggest thing I did to get through the plateau is just not give up. Exactly, Erica. So yeah, er Erica's here all the time. And so, you know, she had the plateau and she didn't freak out because when you guys, usually when you hit a plateau as a dieter, you're freaking out and you're cutting even more. You're depriving yourself even more, restricting even more, which usually creates the opposite effect where you you end up quitting and you get so frustrated. Oh, what's the point? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Any advice on family members that discourage you, encourage weight gain after seeing you transform? Yeah, that's a real thing too, right? That's such an important piece of weight loss that's very rarely talked about is how your weight loss and your change in behaviors and thinking is going to impact the relationships that are most important to you in your life. This is a huge thing to deal with because most people have a situation like this. I dealt with this. It was very challenging. Now, part of the reason it was so challenging, I was like, what? What the fuck? My dad died of a heart attack and here I am dropping 50 pounds and becoming healthier and I'm getting shit for it. Like it was, it was weird, (laughs) very weird. And it was very triggering and very upsetting back in the time. Now I can appreciate it now because I think what happens is, I think a good way to think about that is that when you start making healthier choices, living differently, and then the weight loss starts happening, it's like you're holding a mirror up to these people. You don't intend to, but it's kind of like it has the effect of like you're holding a mirror. Say, hey, why don't you think about what you're doing? And it's uncomfortable for people. So a lot of times the easiest way to get out of that is to sabotage you, all right? So listen, what it comes down to is we all got challenges. What you have to do is acknowledge those challenges, identify them, and then come up with solutions to it. I will tell you the the advice on that one. When you have discouraging family members or friends around you is you have to really, really nurture your motivation 
your clarity, your focus, why you're doing this. You've got to, because the environment's not doing that for you. It's doing the opposite. So you need that. This is exactly what I did. Now, luckily, I had my, my wife was my girlfriend at the time, but luckily I, I could always con- confide in her. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to find someone else who's on a similar path as you. Um, and if you can't find that, you have to, again, each and every night kind of go back and say, is this, why do I want to do this? That, why, why is this important to me? And you have to kind of replenish and renew and um, maintain your motivation level. Okay, because again, you know you're gonna have people coming at you, and so you have to prepare for that and, and do it. Because you can do it. Okay, it, it's it's unfair. We all have challenges, though. Okay, understand that. This is your challenge. It may not feel fair, but we all got challenges. So it's up to you to identify what the challenge is, and then figure out how can I resolve. How can I deal with this? How do I want to feel about these people kind of discouraging me and frustrating me? How do I want to deal with that? How do I want to respond to it? And the more you keep yourself answering that question, the more strategies revolve in, in the. You'll just still get the results even though they're doing that. Sammy says, I try fasting and everything, but keep on going back to binge eating. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) I think the best way to become a binge eater is to fast, okay? The more restrictive you are with your food, the more likely you are to binge at the end of it, okay? So I think that that's that's that. You got to look at the big picture. Me personally, I think what you need to do is you need to manage your hunger, not not get yourself as hungry as possible. Um, The classic example I see... I, I, I say this all the time, but I, I hear this. I've heard this just so many times. It's, it's just like the norm. People come to me and say, Jim, listen, everything's going great at breakfast and lunch, and then everything's falling apart in the afternoon and at night. And I say, well, what do you eat for breakfast and lunch? They go, nothing. I say, okay, well, what would you like to eat for <laughs> afternoon and dinner? Nothing. Okay, that's a diet or mindset, right? You just want to eat as little as possible, be as hungry as possible, so you lose weight as fast as you can. It's a shitty strategy. It's so stupid on the on the surface, and I'm not buzz- I'm not. Um, judging you because a lot of people think this way but what i want you to do is take a step outside and say oh no shit no wonder i'm binge eating i'm over restricting get myself so hungry i can't control my eating okay so a lot of times where the problem shows up is not where the problem was created and the example i just said is a perfect example of this the problem is not that you don't have willpower in the afternoon to not eat the problem is that you didn't nourish yourself breakfast and lunch and now you got yourself so hungry that you can't control your eating So a much better strategy is to manage your hunger throughout the day. This is why I eat early in the day. Again, we use something in the program called the hunger scale, but I want to get myself to a comfortable level of satisfaction early in the day, and I ride that out all day long. I'm not sitting in front of you at my goal weight because I have some amazing willpower. That's not... That's not what's going on for me. Because when I get hungry now, like randomly something happens and now I get really hungry, I, I tend to make the not great food decisions, okay? My secret is that I strategically manage my hunger all the time. So I never get that hungry. And that allows me to make much better food choices. I hope that makes sense to you, Sammy. Um, Nippy Zippy, thank you. I'll take that advice. I've been consistent, but was thinking I need to move more. Yeah, and that might be true too, Nippy Zippy. You know, again, so it's it's about... It's kind of looking at what you've done and then strategically saying what's what's something I think can help kind of move me along, okay, in a comfortable way. But don't start with the calorie piece of it, just cutting more and more and more out. I like the moving idea more. Uh, Maha says, I started cutting dinners and I think it's working. Um, yeah, as long as you're not miserable about it, you know, but, but usually for most people, cutting dinners is pretty extreme. So I don't want you to think about how much weight loss you get. I want you to think about how sustainable it is. If you guys would start building around sustainable methods and strategies, it changes everything because that's not what you're doing. Dieters don't give a shit about sustainability. All they care about is losing weight. Most dieters approach weight loss like they're running a sprint, right? Because you think of it as a temporary thing. I'm going to diet until I lose the weight. So who gives a shit? Let's just get over as quick as possible. And as soon as you approach it as a sprint, you're in trouble because if you run a sprint and you trip a little bit, you lost the. Sp- you, you need to be absolutely perfect to win a sprint. If you're running a marathon, you trip a little bit. You, it's okay. You can absorb it. And this is why when you diet, any little mistake you make feels catastrophic, right? Because you're thinking in such a short time frame, it's setting you up for failure. And the diets want you to fail, folks. All the big diets you're referencing to lose weight are all owned by the big food companies. Weight Watchers is owned by Heinz. Jenny Craig is owned by Nestle. Atkins Food Products is owned by the same company that owns Onions, Pretzels, Carvel, and Cinnabon. The company that owns Slim Fast is the same company that owns Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream. None of these companies want you to lose weight, okay? They want you to get you coming and going and fill your head with rocks when you go and diet and learn dumb, stupid strategies. This is why no one's losing weight on a diet. I can sit here and say keto sucks, Weight Watchers sucks, intermittent fasting, it's okay, but it sucks for most people as a diet. Um, They all suck. And, and the reason why is they're, they're half-assed strategies. You have no mindset strategy with them. You have no idea. How to, don't you think how you think about things might have a big impact on how you eat, behave, and ultimately what you weigh? And yet you've never once 
learned about mindset with weight loss. Don't you find that odd? How could you ever resolve this area of your life? It's like, you know, we do this with drug addicts. Back in the 80s, we told drug addicts, hey, just say no, right? Such a superficial, half-assed response. But that's what the diets are. The diets are basically the same. It's the food version of just say no. Oh, you've been an overeater and struggle with food your whole life and emotions and all the rest of it? Oh, yeah. Well, let's start the diet today and now just say no to it. Oh, never thought of that before, you know? The problem is that you don't say no to say no. The problem is you don't know how to say no consistently. You don't know how to change the way you think so that you naturally do the things that give you the results you want. And you never learn it. Because I can ask you this. Say, where, where could you even, even if you haven't done it, where would you go to learn about how to change your mindset for weight loss? Think about this. It's a 72 fucking billion dollar a year industry. Where are you going to learn how to change your mindset to lose weight? Give me a name. Give me a name. Are you wondering why you can't get the results you want? Is it because you're broken? Nope. Nope. <laughs> it's because you're never given the full story, in my opinion. You know? Um, Savannah says, excellent advice. It's totally shifted my mindset. Thank you. You're welcome, Savannah. That's what I'm here to do is shift your guy's mindset, okay? Um, that's what I do. Um, Nippy Zippy, I've lost three stones. Still loads to go. Okay, three stones, folks, right? That's like, what? It's like 46 pounds, right? It's almost 50 pounds, okay? But now is it Nippy, Nippy Zippy's in a plateau. So again, folks, you're going to hit plateaus anyways along your journey unless you got like five pounds to lose. But if you got loads to go after 50 pounds, we're talking maybe 100 pound, 150 pound weight loss this person's looking to achieve, okay? So certainly within that time, there's gonna be plateaus. That's normal and natural. So you should know if you have a lot of weight to lose, you gotta go into the process prepared for plateaus, not go into the process, okay, this time I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be a straight line of success. Every week I'm gonna lose five pounds. Every week, every single week I'm gonna lose five pounds. And then the week you lose three pounds, you're devastated. You know, you gotta prepare yourself for these things. And Nippy Zippy does. Nippy Zippy listens to all this stuff. Zippy Zippy, you should be in my program, though. I don't know if you're in the program yet. Melissa says, how to get through the mental block of lingering near your goal weight. I'm 10 pounds away from mine. Um, yeah, Melissa, I find that interesting. How long, I, I'd like to know how long you've been doing that. I have a couple people in my program, and I love it because I would say about a third of the people that ended up working with me are only like 10 pounds away from their goal weight. And people say, wow, how do they invest that much money? We work with you and all the rest of it. And it's like, because... I know you can't, most people can't see it, but sometimes even if you're 10 pounds overweight and you've been that way for like 15 years, it's like you're obsessed with the weight just as much as someone who's 150 pounds overweight, you know? Um, and it's almost worse too because you're so close and you're like, what the hell? What ends up happening a lot of times, this is why I'd like to know how long you're doing because it would dictate my answer. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna presuppose that, that maybe you've been doing this for a while. And if that's the case, a lot of times what is happening is the weight and being 10 pounds over is almost like your security blanket. Like, because you think about weight 24 hours a day. And so it almost becomes comforting. Folks, this is the same for all of you. Even if you're overweight and you hate it, and you want to lose weight more than anything in the world, and that's all you think about. If you've been overweight for a while, you have to recognize that while you may not like it, you're familiar with it. You're comfortable living as an overweight person in this reality. And that can't be overstated. Most people prefer a known hell to an unknown heaven. And so this is why that, that self-image, the identity piece of transformation... In Program Yourself Thin, this is this, this is really the beginning of the program. After we do motivation, we get to self-image. Because really what this process is, it's one of transforming how you think of yourself. The hardest part for me to live as a thin and healthy person was not losing the weight. The hardest part was I was probably like five, six years into being at my goal weight. I'd been there for five, six years. And I remember thinking to myself, am I really not going to make this all about food? Because for me, my dad who died at 54 of a heart attack was just the greatest guy in my life. Like I, I love this guy. He was awesome. And he loved food. He was literally like, like people knew him as an eater, not even a foodie. He loved food. Like in that sense, he liked good food, but he was just a blue collar guy, worked hard, funny as shit. Great guy. So nice, helpful, just all awesome qualities of a person, but he loved eating and he was known as an eater. And so it, that was the hardest part for me is to be like, I'm going to let go. Like, I felt like I was like saying no to him almost in some weird way. And so for me to identify as this person whose whole life isn't about eating food, it felt like I was kind of closing the door on him a little. And I know it doesn't make sense probably, but what I'm trying to tell you is that a lot of the things affecting your weight are these subconscious things that you're not even aware of. That's why in Program Yourself Then, the, the first rule we talk about is that awareness precedes change. 
you got to gain more awareness of what's even stopped. You don't even know. This is why when people tell me, I know what I got to do, I just need to get myself to do it. I, I can't even roll my eyes enough in my head to say that is complete fucking bullshit. You do not know what to do because you know what happens when we know what to do? We do it. If you know how to do something, you do it. And if you don't know how to do something, you don't do it. And so if you're not living at your goal weight, it's because you don't know how. You don't know how mindset-wise, you don't know how lifestyle-wise, and you don't know how eating-wise. And it's that simple. Stop bullshitting yourself saying, oh, I know how to do it. No, I know how to be a millionaire. I just got to get myself to do it. Stop with that shit because you're, you're, you're jerking yourself around. It's not true. It's not true. And the more you jerk yourself around, the less you can find the actual solution to it. Um, stay calm. Don't let yourself get hungry. Yeah, hangry and down 22 pounds since 12 one. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome, Doxy Mom. Yep. Yeah, Doxy Mom's been around, right? She's listening. She hears this stuff. That's why I say, like, even if you don't join the program, I'll still help you with this. That's so great. Yeah, staying calm, I think, is probably one of the most important emotions to master your weight. Which is why diets don't work, folks. I know you're already stressed out. I don't know you, and I know you're stressed out. If it's 2024 and you're living in America, <laughs> come on, man. It's just, it's friggin', it's, right? Really, like time's speeding up, right? So you're already up to here with life. You're, you're just, you're running at full capacity, mentally, emotionally, physically. And so what are you going to do to fix your weight? Start tomorrow some crazy diet where you completely change how you're eating and living, and you're just going to jump into it 100%. Yeah, I don't think you are. And I don't think it's going to work. I think what will happen is you'll do it for a couple days, maybe a couple weeks, and then you'll go right back to what you always do. How do I know that? Because that's what you've done the last fucking 20 times. So if you want new results, you probably have to do something a little different. <laughs> All right. Staying calm is one of them. What about emotional eating? Yeah, emotional eating, right? Everyone's a big thing. Um, what I will tell you is this. Don't stop yourself from emotional eating. Don't stop yourself from binge eating. Instead, seek to understand it. Go back in time, five minutes before you started emotionally eating or binge eating, and pay attention to two things. How hungry were you and what mood were you in? Because the emotional eating is a strategy you rely on to deal with your emotions. And so the emotional eating is not the problem. The bigger problem is that you don't know how to deal with those emotions on a genuine level. So let's just say you are emotionally eating every night at, at night, eight o'clock starts. And I say, well, emotions going on. Well, I feel lonely. Okay, so you use the food to distract yourself from the loneliness. The food's not really the problem. The problem is you don't know how to feel what you want to feel. And so if you feel lonely, I say, well, what do you want to feel? Maybe say, I want to feel connected. I want to feel love. I want to feel, you know, um, surrounded by, by people. Great. Once we recognize that, then we ask the question, how can I feel those things? Oh, maybe I call my family and friends. Maybe I go visit someone. Maybe I go out and play bingo. Maybe I go to the mall. Whatever. There's a million solutions available to you and you're not seeing them because you're conditioned to think in the same way. So again, the emotional eating is not the problem. It's just a symptom of a deeper problem. And so instead of trying to stop your emotional eating, begin to seek out what emotions am I avoiding or trying to feel from the emotional eating and then begin to look for genuine ways to feel those emotions. That's a much better way to go about the emotional eating than just trying to stop emotional eating. Um, Brooklyn Dog Mama, how's it going? I have to get my pleasure eating under control. I pleasure eat too much during that day. But that's okay, Brooklyn Dog Mama. So again, we have the clean eating, the pleasure eating days. This is completely normal. I overeat on pleasure days somewhat regularly, okay? It happens. And when I first started, it, I used to eat a lot more. But what happens, Brooklyn Dog Mama, is you've, you've now compressed your pleasure eating into one day. And so yeah, maybe that day it gets carried away, but now it's one day. And now you're aware of it, and now you're going to find strategies to do better on that day. So, so everything's going according to plan. All right, good job. Nippy Zippy, definitely do it, guys. Hypno works on proof. Yeah, Nippy Zippy's killing it. Yeah, what, almost 50 pounds, right? Um, Brooklyn Dog Mama, yep, love, love, love the daily emails. They're really good. I really want to try martial arts, but I'm nervous. I get that. You know, there's a lot of simple martial arts, though. Tai Chi's a good place to start. And then they've got, like, classes that are specifically for, you know, people want a gentler experience of it. Um, our health is our most valuable asset. Absolutely. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> prove it. I'm not sure what you're asking to prove, but I would. Um, oh, prove it. Yeah. Oh, that was the, the, the you don't want to lose weight. Um, I'm gonna let that go now. I got to get out of here in a minute, but I love that. I, listen, folks, I'm telling you, you weigh what you want to weigh. You weigh what you want to weigh. <laughs> Subconsciously. Uh, Donnie says, I'm plateauing right now and I feel like giving up. Exactly. What's the point? So frustrating. Um, yeah, Donnie, I just went through the plateauing thing. I wish you were here to hear that. I, I can't do it again. But again, plateauing is the ultimate goal, okay? So when you plateau, treat it as your, your practice and your maintenance, right? Because the ultimate goal is to maintain your goal weight. 
where there's no shifts or lifts in, in, in your weight. So in order to do that, you got to listen, your weight is a reflection of your eating and your lifestyle, folks. OK, so you have two options when you want to lose weight. You can stay focused on what the weight loss ends up being or you can focus on the process you're using to create the weight loss. You can't lose weight. You, you, there's literally you can't lose weight. Literally. Like it's impossible. You can eat better. You can live differently. And over time, through some magical process, your weight goes down. But you can't just lose weight today. Okay? So what I'm trying to say is that your weight's a reflection of how you eat and live. So the more you get obsessed on the eating and living piece of it and how you're doing that, the more you automatically are taking control of the weight. But what you're focused on is what the weight loss is. I'm obsessed with the process. The more you get obsessed with the process, the better your results are going to be. If you took my brain and put it in any of your bodies, we will instantly start losing weight. Instantly. I have mastered weight loss. The second I got put into an overweight body, I would instantly on many different levels start figuring out how to get my weight down to where I wanted it to be. It, it's a mindset game, folks. Your mindset can override any of it. Why do we know this? Because there's people that were obese that now live at their goal weight. Is it common? I'm not going to say it's the most common thing, but it happens. This is what I'm trying to say. This again is a, this is the dieting thing I was referring to earlier. It pisses me off because again, as a hypnotist, I used to work with smokers too. Over a million people a year stop smoking for good. And you never hear that stat, right? So again, yeah, is it harder for obese people, people dealing with obesity to lose the weight and live at a normal weight? Absolutely. But can it be done? Absolutely. So we should be focusing on the people that have done it, not the people that lost some weight and put it back on because their brain signals that they're hungry all the time. I'm not disagreeing with that. But I'm saying clearly there's some strategy that people that are ob have been obese or overweight that now live at their goal weight for two, five, ten years are doing. It's not impossibility. So it's all about the questions we ask and the mindset, which is why I say go go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session. It's a start. It's free. It's all free. Um, Parson says stop drinking soda and unnecessary sweets after moving back on my parents and firsthand seeing how they deal with diabetes. Yeah, great job, Parsons. Yeah, it's helpful to live with other people. And it's it's very enlightening sometimes living with other people and seeing how they deal with stuff. Um, Melissa, I'm on Weight Watchers and they don't teach you long lasting lessons. Exactly, because Weight Watchers is not a, they don't want you to lose weight for good. They want to sell you their shitty food and their shitty plans. Um, you'll do them for a little while, then you go back to what you always do, and then you come back. Um, weight Watchers was originally it was a great program started by a woman in New Jersey, but then it was bought by Heinz and they just have their meetings in the back of supermarket freezers because they just want to sell their shit, you know, their shitty food. And so, um, yeah, Weight Watchers is just a marketing company, you know? The groups used to be okay, but without the groups, they're, they're, they're pointless. Don't waste your money, folks. Crazy. I don't care if your mom and grandma did it. How many times? Oh, man. There's no awards for a number of times people try Weight Watchers, you know? I want to wear a dress I've not been wearing for years. Is this a wrong way to approach mastery? Um, yeah, I think that that's an extrinsic motivator, right? So a, kind of a good way to get to that is if there's no one else on the planet, would I want to lose weight? And if your answer is no, you got to do some soul searching. Um, if there's no one on the planet, I still want to be at my goal because I want to live as long as I can. I want to do the best version of myself as I possibly can be. Um, and I believe that's me at my goal weight, not just because of how I look, but how, you know, you're, you know, this is a system, right? You guys care more about your car and what you put in your car than you do what you put in your body. It's not your fault. We've been conditioned this way. We live in a crazy society, right? But uh, I couldn't pay you enough money to put sugar into your car. <laughs> I'm joking. They're not, they're not apples to apples comparison. But what I am saying is that you don't internalize what you're putting in your body the same way you do your car. You don't think of your body as like a system. You think your prime motivation to lose weight is a superficial one. Because again, you've been conditioned to think about weight loss like a dieter. And you've seen millions of diet ads in your life. Every diet ad the same before and after picture, picture, superficial, visual, image, extrinsic motivator. And so what's the deeper motivation? I don't give a shit. I just want to look better. Why? Who gives a fuck? Who cares? Guess what? That's not enough motivation. Don't believe me? Then why have you lost the weight? You know? I always ask the question, if the person you love the most was kidnapped, and the kidnapper said, if you don't lose weight this month, you're never going to see this person again. Would you lose weight now? Yeah, of course you would. Because now you're really motivated. You ain't motivated, folks. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This, the first hurdle you got to get over to master your weight is your motivation. Imagine this, though. Let me just point this out. You've been trying to lose weight with diets for decades, and you don't even know how to motivate yourself. This is what I'm trying to say. These diets are just running you around in a circle. You're not getting anywhere. Don't even know how to motivate yourself. What's up, Joy? Um, so, yeah, you got to learn to motivate yourself. That's why the first thing we do in Program Yourself then is learn how to motivate yourself. Um, it's been like four months that I've been lingering. Are you, you're on a plateau. 
four months is a long time. So, oh, oh, yo, yeah, lingering on Weight Watchers. Ugh. Just get program yourself then. Stop, stop messing around. Weight Watchers is, is just come on, folks. Everyone always, everyone with Weight Watchers lost weight twenty years ago. Weight Watchers. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, why? Oh, because it was right before my wedding. Hmm. Was it Weight Watchers or the fact that you're getting ready for your wedding? Do you know what I'm saying? It's not the fucking Weight Watchers. It's, it's, there was real motivation. That one time you succeeded on Weight Watchers, there was some real motivation, you know? Anyways. Amberly Allen, you're so great. You're changing the game on this. Thank you, Amberly. I, I hope so. That's my goal here. Hi, Jim. Work on Lifestyle Pyramid. Super duper duper job. That's great. Yeah, the Lifestyle Pyramid is the shit. Hey, Jim, how do I subscribe to your email list? Yeah, just go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session I give you, and you'll be right in there. And I give a bunch of stuff away. I got I got so much cool stuff coming, so get on there. It's all free. I have a program, too. So if you want to order, you know, work with me, you can do that, too. But I also give you tons of shit for free in this podcast every day. Um, I love that you reframed a plateau as a maintenance phase. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice reframe, isn't it? Again, it's all about reframing. On the days I messed up, I just tell myself I practice maintenance. Super, yeah. I was obese, and now I'm living at my goal weight, blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, super, super. How do I apply that analogy to my mindset? Um, ah, I don't know, Destiny. I wish I could answer this. I got to get out of here. I got a call coming up. Again, folks, please, if you're not yet, follow me on TikTok. If you're not following me on TikTok, follow me, okay? Because I'm always putting new stuff on there. Um, and then definitely go get the free hypnosis session I give you. Watch the video I made for you. Um, read the emails I send you. And then I, I send you stuff all the time. If you're really serious, you want to work with me, you, you know, go to Program Yourself then or just go down that path and I'll, I'll let you information about that. Um, and then listen to the podcast, podcast every day. All right, folks, I'm here for you. It can be easier than you ever thought. Um, have a super day and we'll talk soon. Bye.